Hey, I'm all about saving money. Who isn't right? But sometimes going for the cheapest option just doesn't cut it. So if you're here looking for a review on Bargain WordPress hosting, this ain't that video. Today I'm going to show you a premium fully managed WordPress hosting service that really stand out. Curious about what it is? Let's jump right in. And today we're talking about Kinsta, one of the top dogs in the managed WordPress hosting world. <laughs> now I know hosting can sound a little dry or complicated, but uh, stick with me. I'll try to break it down in a way that even your grandpa can understand. First, Finsta is the highest rated managed WordPress host on G2 and currently it holds an amazing 4.8 star rating on Trustpilot. Believe me, that's a big deal. Now, what does fully managed hosting actually mean? Well, it means that you don't have to mess around with servers or maintenance because everything is taken care of for you. So you can focus on your business blog or whatever you're doing and it's saving you a ton of time. Now, once again, Kinsta is a premium service and it's aimed at businesses that need fast, reliable and secure hosting. Speaking of fast, Kinsta is using the latest tech. What separates them from others is that they are the only managed WordPress hosting that offers Google's top CPU servers at no extra cost. If you don't know, these are some of the fastest servers around so your website will load in a blink of an eye. Currently, they've also got 37 global data centers, which means you can host your site closer to your visitors. And the closer the data center is to your actual location, the faster your site loads. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you want to see what are the actual data centers, then take a look at this map or take a look at this data center list here. Next, let's talk about the security. And Kinsta got you covered with auto backups. They have 24 seven site monitoring and they also integrate with Cloudflare for top notch protection against attacks like DDoS. Plus they have a global CDN to keep things running smoothly. Here's another fun fact about Kinsta. That is Kinsta hosts more than 120,000 live websites. And those are from small businesses to huge enterprises. As you see from the screen, it includes also some big names like TripAdvisor, NASA and so on which means they are trusted by companies big and small, and that says a lot about them. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, the support is one of the most important things about web hosting. So, what does it mean? If you ever run into any issues, then no worries, because Kinsta has 24-7 human support. That means no annoying chatbots, no AI, and you'll be talking to a real knowledgeable people. Now you probably wonder how much does it cost and it depends on your needs. If we take a look at the pricing, then you'll see that there is a single site plans, multiple site plans and agency plans. Those are the current prices. You can switch between the monthly and annual pricing. If you choose annual pricing, then you will get two months free. That is approximately 17% off. So sure, if you're looking for a reliable, fast and secure hosting, then Kinsta might just be what you need. All right, now that we've got the money stuff out of the way, let's dive into the settings and uh, the other cool features. There's a lot to cover, so buckle up. Now when this is out of the way, let's log in and see what can we do here. First, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the dashboard with the shortcuts to the most common task you may want to do. That is create a WordPress site, deploy an application, create a static site, or create a database. Next one is WordPress sites. You can create your sites. And if you're not a techie person, you can create a site or you can migrate your site. What does it mean? For example, if you host your site somewhere else and need help with migrating, then click on this request a migration button, fill the form and Kinsta team will do all the rest. In this video, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna create the site by myself and I'll show you later how to do that. Now under the static sites, you can create your static sites. The same goes with the applications that you need to deploy and the same goes with the databases. But now let's start with the DNS. What does it mean? Let's add my first domain because I need my site to use my own domain name, but my domain is registered somewhere else. 
The domain name is wpsimpletest.com. I don't have any WordPress sites installed, so I'm not going to link it. Instead, I'm going to click on add domain button. And those are the name servers I need to use. So I'm going to grab this one here. My domain is registered with the name chip. So I'm going to use this one as an example, but the process is fairly similar for other domain name holders. Just find the domain list or DNS name servers, open up name server information. I have it here. I'm going to choose custom DNS and I'm going to paste first name server, second, third, and last one. Just grab it, add it here, save. And now it may take a bit time. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes, sometimes it takes a couple of hours. And on some rare occasions, I have even seen six to 10 hours. At the moment, it says name servers not pointed to Kinsta. Let's open it up. Let's check the name servers. Still nothing. And as I said, it may take a little bit time. Now I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to back later when the name servers are working. And I'm back. So it took approximately 10 to 15 minutes for the name servers to start working. And as you see, it says name servers pointed to Kinsta and everything works as it should. Once your name servers are pointed to Kinsta, it's time to set up your brand new WordPress site. Let me show you how easy it is with just a couple of clicks and you're all set. Now let's go to the WordPress sites and let's create a new site by clicking on this button here. Now I can choose whether to install WordPress, whether to install empty environment without WordPress or clone existing site. For example, if I choose this one and continue, then I can choose the site I already created and clone it here. I'm going to go back and choose install WordPress, select continue, give the site a title, for example, WP tests. Now I'm going to choose a nearest data center for my market. That is Finland. As you see, CDN will be activated by default and edge caching will be also activated by default. What is edge caching? Well, it dynamically generates HTML content of your site, improving website speed by up to 45%. That's good. Okay, continue. WordPress site title, WP tests, admin username, password, email, select the site language and you can choose whether to install WordPress multi-site, install WooCommerce, let's do that, install Yoast SEO, let's do also that, and nothing else. Now let's continue, and it says your site is being created. It's going to take a couple of minutes, and when it's ready, you'll receive an email which says that your site is ready, here's the link, and your username. If the site is ready, then there is a two ways for you to see it. First, this is the success message here, but if you go to the WordPress sites menu, you'll see all the installed sites here. This one is ready and this one is in the process to be created. Next, I'm going to connect this site to my own domain. That is, instead of the wpsimpletest.kinsta.cloud, I would like to display wpsimpletest.com. So, I'm going to go to the DNS. Open up this one here, scroll down, and as you see, there is a linked WordPress site. I'm going to add a site, select this one here, click Add Linked Site. It says, Linked WordPress site changed on wpsimpletests.com hosted zone. If I need to change it, for example, on a staging area, I'm going to create a new site and later want to change it, then just click on this Change button, select your site, and done. Now there is another thing I need to do. Take a look at this DNS records part here. Let's add a DNS record. I'm gonna choose my site, this one here. I'm gonna leave first input empty because I don't have a subdomain. But if you create subdomains, then you add your subdomain name here. Now add a DNS record with and without www and add DNS records. It added a A record and C name. Now let's test it by going to the DNS checker. Let's test it, search, and you'll see that most of the servers already point to the right place. Once again, it's gonna take a bit time until all the servers point to the right direction.
Before I proceed with the video, don't forget to smash that like button down below here. It means a lot to me and it also helps my channel. So I would appreciate your help. Now let's go back to the WordPress sites. This is my site. I just linked to my domain. Let's open it up and let's see what happens here. First, this button opens up your WordPress admin panel or you can visit your site just like that or go to the admin panel. If you go to the plugins, you'll see that WooCommerce and Yoast SEO have been installed as I wanted it to. These are the environment details. You'll see your site IP address, IP address for external connections and so on. If you need to access your server with a SFTP or SSH, then these are the credentials here. If you need to access your database using PHP MyAdmin, then click on this button and use these credentials. If you need reverse proxy or need to increase your PHP memory, then you can do it here, but pay attention that you have to pay for these separately. Next, you can transfer your site or reset your site or delete your site. Under the domains, you'll see the status of your domain and linked DNS zone. This is the one we did a minute ago. Under the backups, you'll see daily backups. Already it has created a backup and I can use this button to restore the site. If you need hourly backups, then you can purchase it as a premium add-on, you can choose between six hour backups and hourly backups. But you can also create manual backups. Just click on backup now button, give it a title, for example, test backup, click on a button. And depending on your site size, it may take 10 or 20 seconds or a couple of minutes. For me, it took approximately 10 seconds because it's a blank site. There are also system generated backups it says that we automatically create backups before specific actions and we store system generated backups for two hours to 14 days, depending on its type. Even in external backups, Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage, then those again are premium add-ons. If you need to download your backup, then downloadable backups are displayed here. Next, let's take a look at the tools. There are a bunch of tools you can use. For example, you can restart your PHP, which is useful if you need to resolve some issues that lead to site speed problems or connectivity trouble. You can enable WordPress debugging. If you need to find and replace any values in database, then you can use this tool. There are also new relic monitoring, password protection, force HTTPS. You can enable geolocation. You can enable IonCube Loader on your environment if your plugin team or PHP script needs that. You can change the PHP version. Let's change it from 8.1 to 8.2. As you see, I can do that with a couple of clicks. What else you can do? You can remove set cookie headers. You can enable site preview to test your site before migration. And you can enable early hints, that is, you can improve loading speed by allowing the browser to preload resources before serving the response from the server. Just click on enable button and done. Now, there is also a tool called DevKinsta. What is it? It's a tool that allows you to create WordPress sites in your computer without the need to have a hosting. Now, pay attention that this is a development tool. If you're a beginner and you have a site in your computer, then it's not available for others to see. It's just for developing your site. And with the help of this tool, you can do it in your computer. It's here. You can download it by clicking on this button. Next, if you need to add some redirects to your site, you can do it here. Under the themes and plugins, you'll see what themes and plugins are installed on your site. You can activate or deactivate them here. For example, if I activate this Hello Dolly plugin using my Kinsta dashboard, it says your plugin is being enabled. Now, if I go to my site, refresh it, you'll see it's activated. In a similar way, I can deactivate it. Next, let's go to the add-ons. There are some premium add-ons for disk space, premium staging environments, PHP memory, reverse proxy, Redis caching, hourly backups and external backups. If you're dealing with a bot or spammer and need to deny some IP addresses, then you can do it here. 
Under the analytics, you'll see all the resources available to your site. You see the plan usage, CDN usage, dispersion. You can see the performance, response times, cache info, and geo and IP information. Under the caching, you can enable the mobile caching. You can clear your site cache, that is the edge cache, which was activated by default. You can clear some specific URL cache here. Under the CDN, you can clear the CDN cache. There is also an image optimization option. Currently it's set to none. I can set to lossy or lossless if needed. And last option, you can exclude files from CDN. Next option is for server caching. And if you need to clear it, then this is a button for you. Next one is Redis caching. It's a premium add-on, you can purchase it separately. Now almost there, there is a application performance monitoring. You can enable it here. And what will it do? It will track and analyze slow transactions, database queries, external requests and WordPress plugins and hooks. Pay attention though that there is a notification about using this tool may impact site performance while monitoring is enabled. Don't forget to disable it when you have collected enough troubleshooting data. Next one, you can add users with service level access. And these are the people that have access to this site here. Now you can see the user activity. And last one is logs. So all what is needed for managing your site is right here. And you can reach them with a couple of clicks. All this sounds great, but I wondered how much faster is Kinsta compared to regular hosting. So I decided to test it out by migrating one of my test sites to Kinsta and measuring the speed of these sites. Let's check out the results. Now it's time for a speed test. That is, as you see, I have my test site here. This is hosted with Kinsta. I migrated this site from my other hosting. That is this site here. So. This is not Kinsta hosting and this is Kinsta hosting. I run a website speed test. As you see, a loading time for non-Kinsta hosting was 2.3 seconds, according to the Pingtum. And according to the Pingtum, the same site loads within 751 milliseconds, that is less than a second, almost three times faster than the regular hosting. Now let's compare the admin dashboard. I'm going to go to the WooCommerce and orders. Let's open up my performance analyzer browser extension. And it says that this page loaded within 1.1 seconds. It has 174 requests. Now let's do the same test with a non-Kinsta site. I'm going to open up WooCommerce orders. Let's open up the performance analyzer. And it says that it loaded within 1.6 seconds. So. With the Kinsta, it was approximately half a second faster. These are the tests with the tools, but what I usually like to do, I'm going to go to the site and just browse. As you see, I opened it with a private view and it's lightning fast. I'm talking while I'm browsing and as you see, everything opens up really fast. So just open up the products, add to cart, go to the cart, go to the checkout. Everything is lightning fast. Awesome. Now let's go back to the dashboard. And as you see, it has changed a bit. I see that there are two sites, WP Simple Tests and W Tests. Analytics dashboards displays already some information and I can access my sites directly from these links here. Now let's delete the site. Let's go to WordPress site. I'm going to open up this one. It's not connected to my domain. I'm going to scroll down, click on delete site button. I confirm that I understand what is going to happen. I need to add this text here. Click on delete site. It says deleting. It's going to take a couple of seconds and then it's done. Now a couple of other things before I wrap up. Top here you see all the notifications. Next there is a link to the support and documentation. And under your name you can change user settings and company settings and log out. If you need to search for something then you can do it here. Before you jump to the next cat video, check out the next video on your screen right now. In it, I'll walk you through how to migrate your site from one server to another without any hassles. So make sure to watch that next. 
In the meantime, take care.